Hi, this is Jennifer from Read It Again. Join me while I read the first half of the Cobble Street Cousins Summer Party by Cynthia Ryland. Please consider subscribing. And if you enjoyed this book, hit the like button and share this video with all your friends. Part one of the Cobble Street Cousins Summer Party by Cynthia Ryland, illustrated by Wendy Anderson Halperin. Chapter One, A Little Weepy. In a pretty blue house on Cobble Street, three girl cousins lived with their wonderful Aunt Lucy. Lily and Rosie were sisters. Tess was their cousin, and they were all nine years old and best friends. They had lived in Aunt Lucy's attic for nearly a year in wonderful little spaces all their own. Lily, behind long, lacy yellow curtains with her rabbit collection and her poetry. Lily wanted to be a writer. Rosie, behind the patchwork quilt with her rag doll and angel girl and her bear, Henry. And Tess, behind the screen painted with palm trees with her stack of old records. Tess loved to sing. And her cat, Elliot. The girls loved Aunt Lucy's house, and they loved Aunt Lucy, and they had had the most wonderful year together. But now their parents, who had been on a world tour with the ballet, were on their way home, and it was time for everything to change. Lily and Rosie and Tess sat on the front porch swing and talked about it, or tried to, I can't talk about it, said Rosie, her eyes welling up. Of the three cousins, Rosie was the most tender and sentimental. I feel like writing a very sad poem, said Lily, or singing a really sad song, said Tess. The three girls sat quietly, holding hands. Tess's cat, Elliot, walked all over their laps, purring, but it didn't help much. Suddenly, Rosie said, There's Michael! It was Aunt Lucy's boyfriend, Michael, walking down the street. Michael was so nice, and the girls liked him very much. In fact, the cousins were responsible for getting him and Aunt Lucy together. And they loved the fact that even though his family was wealthy, Michael was studying to be a botanist, and he always looked a bit shy and a bit crumpled. The cousins were really hoping he'd be their uncle someday. Michael walked up onto the porch. He looked at the cousins with a worried smile. Hi, girls, he said. Is everything okay? And with that, Tess burst into tears and went running into the house. Tess wanted to be a Broadway actress someday, so she never worried about expressing herself. Goodness, said Michael. Something is wrong. He sat down on the porch railing and looked at Rosie, who seemed nearly ready to burst into tears herself. What is it, Rosie? Michael asked. Can I help? Rosie shook her head. It's just that we have to go home soon, she said in a quiet voice. Our real homes. And Rosie and I will miss Tess so much, added Lily. And Elliot and Aunt Lucy and this wonderful old house and, and everything, Rosie nodded. And you too, she told Michael. Michael was quiet a moment. Then he said, you're right, it is sad. No one likes to leave. People and places they love, even if there are more people and places ahead of them to love. Rosie and Lily nodded. The screen door opened and Tess came outside carrying a box of tissues. I'm okay now, she said with a sniffle. I just need to need it to let go. Michael smiled. Tess sat down on the swing again and took Lily's hand. At least you and Rosie have each other, she told Lily. I won't have anybody. You'll have Elliot, said Lily. Oh, said Tess, you're right. I do love Elliot. Elliot was back in her lap, purring. The three cousins looked as if they all might burst into tears and all run into the house together. So Michael said, why don't we go somewhere fun? We'll stop at the flower shop and tell your Aunt Lucy 
where we're going. Then we'll do something fun. The girls didn't speak. No one wants fun, asked Michael. Rosie gave a little grin. I guess I'll have to take Elliot instead, said Michael. Tess and Lily both smiled. Can we go to a movie? asked Rosie. A funny movie? Tess and Lily nodded in agreement. The funniest movie in town, said Michael. My treat. Plus all the popcorn and candy you can eat. Yay, said Tess. Everyone looked at her in surprise. Oops, she said, covering her mouth. I forgot to be sad. Everyone laughed. It was so good to be feeling better. Chapter 2, Hope After the movie, which was about a silly monkey who made them laugh and laugh, the cousins and Michael went back to Aunt Lucy's flower shop. They walked past the beautiful flowers and the window box and the bright blue bench out front. Michael opened the door. Ding! I love this shop so much, said Rosie. Me too, said Tess and Lily. They all felt a little weepy again. But there was Aunt Lucy with hugs for everyone and offers of tea and cookies, and the cousins couldn't feel weepy for long. Over tea, they talked about their parents' com homecoming. It isn't that we don't love them, said Tess, or don't miss them, said Rosie, or don't want to see them, added Lily. Aunt Lucy nodded sympathetically. It's just that we don't want to miss each other, said Lily, and you. Aunt Lucy smiled. It is hard, she said quietly, and for a moment the cousins thought she was going to cry. And they all realized something. Aunt Lucy was sad too. Somehow that made them feel better. But we all have to be brave and full of hope, said Aunt Lucy. We have to make plans for the future, don't you think? Really fun plans. Lily, Rosie, and Tess all looked at each other. They almost felt a little brave. They almost felt some hope. Let's make plans, said Tess. Really good ones. Okay, said Rosie and Lily. So, what would make you girls happy? asked Michael. What could you look forward to? Well, said Tess, thinking, how about reunions? Definitely, cried Lily. Family reunions, said Rosie, for this family, us and you two. Sounds perfect, said Aunt Lucy, when? The cousins thought. How about every single summer until we're all grown up, asked Rosie. Yes, said Tess, definitely, said Lily. Aunt Lucy smiled. You are welcome here any time at all, she said. You could come and stay all summer long in your very same beds in the attic if you wanted to. All summer long? asked Rosie. Yay! cheered the cousins. Pretty good plans so far, said Michael, smiling and pouring himself another cup of tea. What about something fun for now? asked Aunt Lucy. Would you like to do something special when your parents arrive? The cousins looked at each other. I have an idea, said Lily, who was always good at ideas. Let's have a summer party for them, like those pretty ones in the movies with Japanese lanterns on the lawn and fancy punch and entertainment, finished Tess. We're really good at that. Maybe I could make little vegetable people, said Rosie. <laughs> like what? asked Tess. Little vegetable people, said Rosie. You know. Everyone looked at Rosie with blank faces. Then Lily laughed and hugged her sister. Rosie, you're the best, said Lily. You mean like little broccoli mailman, said Tess. Rosie smiled. It was good to have plans. <clears throat> Chapter 3, Party Plans That evening, the co cousins gathered in the middle of the attic. They called it the playground, with their dolls and bears and rabbit and one real cat to talk about their summer party. I wish we could have an ice sculpture, said Lily, changing the jacket on one of her rabbits. Fancy parties always have ice sculptures. We could make pretty ice cubes at least, said Rosie. Red and blue and green ones. 
It's easy with food coloring. We could serve pink lemonade with colored ice, said Tess. Great. Lily wrote down that plan for the party. What about food, she asked. Rosie had given up on the vegetable people idea. She worried they might wilt. We could use Aunt Lucy's cookie cutters to make pretty sandwiches, said Rosie. Kitty sandwiches and teapot sandwiches and umbrella sandwiches. Aunt Lucy has good cookie cutters. Great, said Tess. Rosie, you are really good at this. Tess wasn't really surprised. Rosie was always the best at making things pretty or cozy. Rosie was very domestic. Let's make lemon cookies, said Lily. I love lemon cookies. Me too, said Rosie. Can we also have fudge for me, asked Tess. Fudge for Tess, said Lily, writing it down. What about entertainment, asked Rosie. My favorite subject, said Tess. We should choose a theme, said Lily. How about goodbyes, asked Tess. Oh no, Rosie said, we'd all be blubbery and weepy. That's entertainment, Tess said with a grin. How about forever, asked Lily. We'll be cousins forever and friends forever and we'll love this wonderful old house forever. Don't forget Elliot, said Rosie with a giggle, scratching the kitty's head. Sure, said Tess. There are lots of good songs about forever. Good poems, too, said Lily. You should write one, said Rosie. Your poems are best. Lily smiled. Thanks. I just got a great idea, said Tess. What? asked Lily. Let's have fortunes for everybody. We can write them down and then roll them up into little packages and everybody will get one. You know how Aunt Lucy said it's all about the future now. Perfect, cried Lily and Rosie. Tess grinned. I am so brilliant, she said. The cousin's summer party was really beginning. <laughs>